Hello folks, welcome to Inktober Day 4 and today's prompt from the Greek Mythtober prompt list that I created is Cassandra. So I will go into a bit of the background of the Cassandra story and then talk a bit about why I created this piece as I did. The story of Cassandra is, I think, one of the saddest in Greek mythology. And I think it also has some parallels to things that are happening today. So I'm going to talk about those in a bit. Uh, but for starters, the, the story of Cassandra begins before the Trojan War. And it's very much linked with the Trojan War. So Cassandra is a priestess of the god Apollo in, in Troy. And, you know, she's just going about her business, as she does. And one day, Apollo turns up at the temple and, of course, immediately falls in love with the beautiful Cassandra and being a god and a man decides that you know, he can't possibly live without her. So he, he makes a bargain with her. And basically, when she, when she says no... <laughs> I don't want to sleep with you. He curses her. So he gives her the, the gift of prophecy, but she is doomed to never be believed. So she can see the future. She can see how terrible the future is going to be, but nobody is going to believe her. And of course, what she sees in the future is the Trojan War. The Trojan War goes on for about a decade, for one thing, and the other thing is that the Trojans famously lose, and Cassandra is of Troy, so she has a vested interest in people believing her, but of course nobody does, and over time they believe that, that she is crazy, that she's gone mad, and so while the people around her maybe still love her, she is ignored all the time um, and so she sees the fall of Troy and she knows that the Trojan horse is a, a, a decoy it is a way for the Greeks to get into the city but of course again nobody listens to poor old Cassandra so she she is doomed to to know the future and and to see exactly what is going to happen and yep Nobody believes her. So that's why I think this story is so incredibly sad. And what I am depicting here is Cassandra's vision of the fall of Troy. And I didn't want to draw a whole sort of burning city, um, partly because to get that done in one day, it would be quite challenging. And I, I wanted it to still feel like my style of illustration so I'm just doing sort of flames happening here uh, it's very orange uh, that's what I'll say about this drawing uh, which I'm not thrilled about um, you'll see I do knock back the the orange a little bit um, but yeah uh, so I, I wanted that sort of pattern like feel still to be going on and um, I used a reference image I think it was a Julia Margaret Cameron photograph uh, so from sort of early days of photography and that's why that, that's what I'm doing for a lot of these drawings and I think it it lends itself to quite a static look because of course with longer exposure times for these photographs uh, that the sitters had to be very still for a long time so they had to do something where they could hold that pose for however long the exposure was uh, so you do end up with quite sort of stiff figures that aren't, um, they don't have the, the same dynamism that you would have in, in photographs today. They don't capture a moment so much as a series of moments. Uh, so I think that was part of the weakness of the, the reference and um, I didn't manage to include too much more um, of a, a dynamic feel in, in the final piece, but that's okay, you know, again living and learning <laughs> and you'll see here as I go around these spots I decided to go over some of them I felt like there were a few too many it started looking a bit too polka dotty and I actually changed them into stars rather than polka dots a bit later as well because I didn't think that they necessarily looked like that kind of bokeh effect that I was going for instead they looked like polka dots or I don't know bubbles or something it just looked a bit odd so um, I think fixing that 
really helped. The other thing I wanted to do with this was to create that sense of firelight on her skin a little bit. So I've added hints of gold and, and yellows and, and oranges to her skin tone just to sort of warm it up and um, yeah, make it feel a, a little bit more reflective. And you'll see in a bit that I go in with gold and that certainly lifts the whole thing quite a bit. At this point I was lamenting my lack of a sort of bright red colour. Uh, I don't have a bright red marker and the ink that you can see on the right there is great and it's the right colour but it's got a shellac base which means that it's it, it dries very hard and I've found when I've used it in the past that the gold ink won't stick over the top of it, it kind of repels it. And so instead I've gone in here with a bit of watercolour, a bit of red watercolour, which acts in pretty much the same way for, for the way I'm using it. Uh, so hopefully that's not cheating too much. Um, but yeah, I knew that if I used the red that I was going to really struggle to go back in over the top with, um, with the gold ink which is something I do do. Uh, yeah, so here I've sort of brightened it up a bit. Uh, well, not necessarily brightened it up so much as made it less orange. That was quite important to me. Uh, yeah, so here, oh, here I've made yet another mistake with the, <laughs> the dip pen and managed to make a great big blob on her hair. Well done, Holly. Um, and at this stage, I was also still kind of learning with the, the pen and how to use it, how much ink to put on there. It's a real fine balance <laughs> between too much ink and not enough ink. And the other thing I was struggling with here was the fact that I had taped this page down, which meant that I couldn't rotate it. And I'd forgotten about how much I rely on rotating a page to, to get those nice smooth lines. It's much easier to go with kind of the natural curve of your hand as you go. Uh, so that was a little bit annoying and I think it, it didn't help my line work. Uh, in retrospect I could have taken the, the piece off and restuck it in different places. Uh, but the other thing to consider with this ink is that it stays wet for a while so you want to be careful where you're putting your hand and not smudging it across the page. Uh, always a challenge. But yeah, I think th this really is starting to come together at this point. The, the gold just somehow makes it work so much better. I think it makes it feel more like my work because I use an awful lot of gold, as you may have noticed. Um, I'm a big fan of the metallics and um, yeah, it just really made this work so much better. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that Cassandra's story has a lot of relevancy, I think, to today's world and um, not to be too much of a downer, but w when I think about climate change and I think about sort of what scientists have known about for, for so many years and haven't been believed in, it they must feel like Cassandra did, basically. Um, it's sort of seeing the future in, in numbers and, and figures and facts rather than in a, a vision and not being believed, basically, which is why we've now got to this point of ecological crisis and so many animals going extinct and you know the the risk of us losing biodiversity and I mean our food supplies and all of that so um yeah that's kind of what I was thinking about as I was drawing this as well what a horrible place that is to be you know being a Cassandra basically and um yeah it's it's quite sad uh, this is one of my favourite parts, of course, taking off the, the masking tape. And you get mostly a pretty clean line. Unfortunately, the Copic markers do bleed underneath and they, they had bled underneath before I put the black over the top as well. So in some places it's very clean <laughs> and very satisfying. In other places it's a little bit frustrating. But that's okay. We will live. I'm going to scan these and make them digital anyway, so it's not the end of the world. There's the final piece, and looking back at this, I am actually quite pleased with how it turned out. 
especially the way the gold works i think i need to use more gold outlines because that just it just feels right to me and i love how it catches the light here i'm certainly a lot happier with how it looks now than i was when i finished it i think the orange took a bit of getting used to but yeah overall not too bad Thank you very much for watching this time lapse. I hope you are enjoying them. And yeah, like I said, I'm I'm much happier now with this one than I was straight after I finished it. And often that is the case. Sometimes they get worse, but I'm certainly learning things in the process and that is the main thing, I guess. <laughs> if you want to sort of follow along with what's going on with Inktober, then follow me on Instagram. That's the, the best place where I'm most reliable at actually posting stuff. Um, and have a look at the hashtag GreekMythTober because there are other people doing this as well and it's really cool to see different people's interpretations of the same myth. Uh, so that's it for today. I will check in with you again tomorrow for day five. Yes, day five's prompt is Gaia, um, the Earth Goddess. So I will see you then. Uh -huh.